guys, it's me. I'm back. What's up, party people? We're like, man, it's come on. This is this this show is taking a turn for the oh. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Monster Bass Live. We got a great show for you today. We've got Bassmaster Elite Pro Wes Logan with us. Uh Max is back. Um we're gonna break down one of the baits in the August box. Probably give you an update on the big bass championships. I hope you're, you know, throwing out your fish because uh or I mean logging them, because even the smallest fish are winning prizes. So uh, we're going to give away a lot of stuff. As always, we've got the golden ticket, and I don't know why you guys aren't claiming your prizes because my office is starting to stack up with prizes. So i got to give away a lot more stuff. Um, but first, if this is your first time uh, watching the show, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, or head over to Spotify and give, us a fo- give our uh, podcast a follow. Um, this is... Before we get into things, this has been a really, really, uh, it's been a difficult week um, for me personally. I, I've been going through some stuff in terms of, I don't know, maybe I had a cocktail or two and then acted like an ass, and uh, I'm not really proud of myself, And uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, if the week couldn't get any worse... Um, Today, the Monster Bass family was, uh, today, the, the, the Monster Bass family was rocked, and um, it's, it's hit us all. Um, we lost somebody uh, that we shouldn't have lost. Um, someone that works for the family lost their daughter today. And, uh, so if you can do us a favor, send us some positive energy and uh, good vibes, because I know he's going through a lot right now. And um, I can't even imagine what he's going through. Um, And so today's super chat. Is there a way for me to do a super chat? Yeah. All right, put 100 bucks down. Uh, Today's super chat, we're going to donate 100% of any of the proceeds uh, that you guys are so kind to often do. I'm sure his... uh, I'm sure there'll be some kind of scholarship fund or something like that, but we're gonna we're gonna donate all the funds today to uh, to whatever scholarship fund or whatever gets set up after this. We're gonna, I'm 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 gonna let the family be private today, um, but we want to let them know that we're thinking about them, and so um, I just need to get that off my chest because I've been struggling with um, like just trying to imagine what he's going through. And if you don't have kids. It's it's probably, it, I, I can only imagine it's the worst thing to have to do to, like, bury your kid. And um, so uh, my heart goes out to him and their whole family. Um, Max is back. You know, uh, a lot of people thought we put Max on a timeout. Um, I personally, you know... I personally have a hotline to uh, to his school, and I understand he's been at military camp or boot camp or something. So I'm hoping we're going to get a new and improved Max because, as you know, he's going to uh, a special school this year. Not because he was a bad boy, but because he's a, a pretty good, pretty good little dude. So why don't we get Max back on, see what he's been up to? Max, what's going on, bro? Max. I know it's been a long time since you've been on the show, but you got to unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry, it's been it's uh, been too long. Yeah. What yeah. What's going on, Max? How you been? Uh, I'm doing good. I've been doing a lot for my new school, and um. What school are you going to? It's taking a lot of time and work. So, DMA Delaware Military Academy. Now, is that because you got caught shoplifting and they, they forced you to go to military school? Or tell me no. about this school. Why do you want to go there? Uh, because it's not a normal high school. And I'm not a normal kid is what my mom tells me. 
So I want to go there because it's different and it's um it's got a good like smart um what do you call it the like the the work the I curriculum don't know how to say it but yeah curriculum that's the word I'm looking for it's got a good curriculum so it's a really good school and I applied and I got in so that's amazing uh Max it, something's different. Normally, I feel like I'm staring at like your, your, I, I don't, the door's on the other side. Yeah. What's going on here? Right, do you got a new got studio? A new Wait a minute. Keep going. Wait a minute. Max, how old are you? I'm 13. And I'm how, 13. wait a minute. That entire thing is your room? Yeah. Come on. Take, give me another tour. Did you, did we, did we finally kick your aunt out of the divorce apartment? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Whoa. It's a big room. Max, do you hold like, um, do you run like, uh, lotto and, and bingo? Is that like a bingo yeah. hall on the weekends? I was thinking about it. Might have to rent this place out. Wow. Make some moolah. So have you been doing some fishing? Uh, as much as I can. Been really busy lately, but I do have a trip on... Well, we were supposed to go Saturday, but it was bad weather, so we're going Sunday. Mm -hmm. But I'm going out on my uncle's uh, boat, and we're going offshore. Amazing. Amazing. Some tuna, mahi mahi. Amazing. So, I'm excited so for that. uh, what else is going on, buddy? Well, uh, are the obviously, ladies? I've moved into uh, my new room. Yeah. I have the newest member of the family, Billy. Billy. Which is a bass I call out of the creek, and he now spends time with me. So, yeah, awesome. it's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Max, we missed you. I mean. Thanks. Well, uh, you didn't go to ICAST, did you? I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Max, I was gonna you, you should have walked around. I was going to use my money to fly down. Oh, Yeah. Yep. Okay. But I had boot camp the week of ICAST. Okay. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Nice. It was. Nice. Max, um, quick question. <coughs> Since you're now down in the basement, right? Yep. Can you actually sneak out of the house at night without your mom knowing? Let me answer that question in the easiest way possible. Uh -oh. Got to walk over to my door, unlock oh it, because I always keep it locked. Dear God. Oh, my God, Max. <laughs> oh, dear good. It's a good thing you're a good kid. Where, where are you going? Uh, walk back in. Oh, I thought you were going into the front house to see what you had in the refrigerator. No, I have my own fridge now. I bet you do. What do you got in there? You got stacked full of uh, juice boxes? No, nah, it's pretty empty. No Bud Lights, right? Get... It's just got... How do I flip my camera? I always forget. No, Don't worry about it. That's not it. Don't worry about well, it. Well, I got juice, condiments, and an empty fridge. So. Wow. Living the bachelor life, Max. You've got it dialed in. You are 100% already yep. living the bachelor life. Oh, yeah. All right, Max, should we, uh, I don't want to waste any more time. We're going to give away a lot of stuff today. We got a sick guest on here. I just had an opportunity to meet him. At ICAST? Yeah, that or at Waffle House, one of the two. Either, either or. You know anything about our guest today? Uh, yeah, I know he won one of the tournaments not too long ago. Which one? The one that your fishing club's hosting or one of the, a uh, little bit bigger? I don't know. It's right, a big Max. it's a big tournament. I know that. Right. I'm not a tournament. All right. Well, um, Something here's what I need we... you to do, Max. I'm going to need you to do a little research and have two really good questions lined up for him from a kid's point of view, okay? Because, you know, okay. my questions are going to be different than yours. All righty. And, it, and it, I mean, I know my first question. I want to see his refrigerator. He might be down in his man cave, and his refrigerator might look like yours. Who knows? You might have a lot in common. We'll find out. 
So, uh, all right. So, let's not waste any time. Uh, so, our guest today just won his first Bassmaster Elite Series Tournament with a four-day total of 57 pounds, nine ounces. That's more than Max weighs. Uh, in his honor of, of his hometown win at the uh, Whataburger uh, Tournament, uh, I, I'm rocking this one. I figured I'd rock my Monster Bass shirt. Uh, so... Let's give a warm welcome uh, to Wes Logan. Wes, how's it going? What's up, guys? Uh, it's going pretty good, man. Right on, right on. So uh, I just met you at the at uh, this week's iCast. Was this your first one? No, I've been to uh, uh, four, I think, four or five. I'm not sure how many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this one was a little bit different. I mean, there was definitely some noticeable companies missing. What did you think about that? Yeah, you know, I, I, obviously it was a smaller, you know, it was that we were actually in like one concourse. And I remember, I think in 18 or 19, like half of the whole building was full. Um, but, you know, even though some of the bigger companies weren't there, uh, I feel like the companies that, you know, that I work for that I'm partnered with, I mean, the, the people I talked to said they actually had a pretty good show. So, I mean, that's that's kind of promising from a, you know, an industry standpoint. Yeah, I wonder if this is a sign of things to come. Because I, in talking with a lot of people, like, a lot of people, you know, I think it was important for us to have this show because we weren't there no last year. Uh, it was really hard for me to see, to tell what the new products were versus what came in last year because we didn't really have that same, you know, right. let's have that product showcase. Let's look at all the new stuff. Let's unveil it. I, it felt more like a reunion and a, a deep breath for everyone in the industry, right. which was amazing. Um, yeah, and I, like you said, I think it was really big that we were able to do it um, because, just, I mean, just in my honest opinion, I think if we weren't able to have it this year, that it would have been b totally virtual, I mean, from here on out, which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's still something about being able to see everybody face-to-face, -face, you know, get to hold the products in your hand. I mean, yeah. that, that's just that's just the cool thing about the whole deal. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um but it was definitely weird to walk the aisle and not see companies like Sims and Rapala and some of the yeah. big ones, you know, Lunker sure. Hunt, Live Target, you know. So it was pretty interesting. Um, so 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 May was a pretty big month. You uh you you won your first tournament. Have you always wanted to be a tournament angler? Uh yeah, I mean I have to say so. I mean I started like actually tournament fishing when I was you know five or six, and it. And it, obviously it was, you know, team tournaments with my dad and my granddad. And, you know, as I got older, one of my, you know, I had two or three real good buddies that we fished with. But, I mean, it's kind of been, you know, ingrained in my mind that that's just, it's just what I'm going to do. Sure. Nice. So, uh, so you won your first tournament and you did so in your backyard. What was that like? You know, I, I've been, or, you know, in the past, I've come really close to winning some big events uh, and just wasn't able to pull it through on the final day. And for it to all come to fruition there, like actually where I started fishing, where I grew up, where I learned how to do this technique and how to do that, and where I've got so many memories of just, you know, catching one here, catching one there, uh, it, it just made it that much more special. And, you know, I've said it uh, uh, quite a lot actually here lately, after the tournament, I said, if I never win one again, you know, that was the one place that, you know, that I, if somebody told me I could win one, it would have been there. Sure. Sure. Besides your bank account, how's your life changed? <laughs> uh, you know, as far as that goes, I mean, I, I actually have a, a bank where I do all my, you know, my bigger money, to, like stuff where loans and stuff. And I actually put the money there and I haven't looked at it since. I haven't touched it. <laughs> I haven't seen the account or anything. Um, but no, from a, it's pretty crazy how many people actually know who I am that I don't know who they are, like just because they followed it and they watched the whole thing. And they'll come up to me like, man, I was watching you all through the tournament. I watched you that final day. I was glued to it. And I'm like, man, it's just crazy that a guy from a town that might have a thousand people in it. Now I have 10,000 people that know my name. And if they see me, they know who I am just from, you know, actually catching a bass. Things that kids do, you know, walking a pond when you're six or seven, eight years old. Right. And so what's it been like? So, so, so take me through. So you win it. And then how many interviews, how many podcasts, how many things have you done since then? 
Oh, uh, that the two weeks after that, like is immediately after I won, I got like three phone calls for podcast or interviews, and I didn't realize that there was like a competition mm-hmm. to get the guy first. Like we have to get him first because I got ha- I got on with um I don't even remember. I think I got on with Angler Channel first, okay. and then another another group. I was with them second, and they were like, "So we're the first ones to get you, right?" And I was like, "No, I've actually been on one," and they were like pissed off like yeah. mad and i mean i was just scheduling stuff whenever i had time and the crate the worst part about it which I, it's not bad but we actually had a tournament at gunnersville uh like a week and a half later and i was doing interviews every day even oh, during yeah. practice for that event and even after that event i was still doing interviews and podcasts and stuff and you know i really thought i wasn't going to do that good in the you know the Gunnersville event because everything was just scrambled and crazy, and I actually ended up finishing second in it and almost winning it, or not almost winning. Caleb Kufal won by like a hundred pounds, but right. just to have that much success that quick, you know, it was it's it was a little bit of a whirlwind for there for about a month. Yeah, I can only imagine how exhausting it must be to answer the same question over and over. It, that- it, that's what, that was the crazy thing. It's the it was the same thing. I had right. to explain it the same way, which is fine. I mean, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I'll do it every time for it. But it was just crazy how it's just over and over and over. Right. It makes you it makes you really appreciate like your own time because can you imagine being like KVD? That oh, guy. I can't imagine. Ugh. I can't imagine. Or anybody right? like that. Like, like a Hackney, Christie. I mean, they're, they're always just, you know, put on a pedestal. And it's just, I mean, I don't know how they, they make time for everything else. And still able to catch a bass in a mud hole. I mean, just yeah, top notch. So you want to talk about swim jigs on day four? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to do that to you. We're not going to do that to you. I do want to say thank you to James O'Neill, uh, Gabriel. Uh, the other Kevin Van Dam, uh, Big Rich, Army Outdoors, and T Rex. Uh, your super chats really mean a lot. And like I said, we're gonna donate 100 percent of everything, including the 100 that we put in. We're gonna donate that to uh, to the family that's been affected uh, within the Monster Bass family uh, today because uh, it's uh, it's it's um, I got nothing. Yeah, um, you can put me, you can put me down for a hundred. <laughs> We're gonna have to go to that bank where you put the money. Where uh... <laughs> I got nothing. What do you mean, Max? You got everything, yeah. buddy. It looks like you got it going account. on, Max. Are yeah. oh, you gonna show us your bank account? He said, "I got nothing." Ma- oh dear God, six sixty one. <laughs> Max, all I'm gonna tell you is this: you get what you get, so go get it. There you go. You already went and secured yourself the, uh, as soon as your aunt left the divorce apartment, I see you uh, took it over. You strung up some lights around the pole, and uh, you're ready for whatever happens between 13 and 18 and yep. military school and all that fun stuff. Um, so what does the rest of the year look like? We've kind of fished the elites. What do you got going on? Uh, you know, we, like I said, we just got done with ICAST, uh, I guess it was a a little over a week ago and I've actually got to do some writers conferences and a few media events, um, should be done with all that stuff around, you know, the first of October, middle of October. And, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm a big deer hunter. I mean, me and a couple of my buddies get into that. Uh, I actually have a trip planned with my roommate, uh, Justin Atkins, me and him are going to Missouri for a week to bow hunt. Um, and I mean, basically just, you know, I'll be working here and there, you know, doing a little bit of fiddling around the house, fixing stuff up that you don't get to get to, you know, while you're gone so much during the spring and summer. So, I mean, basically just all that tied together. You hear that, Max? He's got a roommate and a yeah, big I, check I, I and, and a few dollars more in the bank account than you. So count your blessings. I, 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 I actually, I actually live with my fiance Riley, which is my girl. Well, she was my girlfriend, fiance, but like I met, as a roommate, like my travel partner on tour is Justin gotcha. Atkins. Gotcha. I was gonna I, say. I, don't get that <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say you're not gonna have a roommate for much longer. They better start looking. <laughs> I see a down payment coming pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> so um. 
Let's talk about uh, is is Arc your title sponsor? They are. They okay. Are. So let's talk about Arc. For those of you at home that haven't heard about Arc, it's probably because you don't follow tournament fishing. Uh, this is a newer brand to the market, but they've been coming on like gangbusters. And uh, we've got one of the we've got one of their baits in in, in the August box. So. Uh, you know, Louie makes some really sick bait. So for everybody at home, can, what, what can you tell them about ARC and uh, the way that they go about designing baits? Yeah, it just starting out from ARC as a company, you know, you mentioned Louie. And I met Louie, you know, I think it was three years ago. And just right off the bat, I knew this was a company that I wanted to be partner with. Not just from a sponsorship standpoint, but I could tell that he actually was doing stuff the right way. I wanted to do everything I could to help this guy that I just literally just met grow this business just as much as we could, because I just know, I know how passionate he is about stuff that he, you know, is doing at art. And I just wanted to be a part of that and help him as much as I can. And I mean, from the rods, you know, the company started out basically as a rod company and he's branching out with the baits and, from the same quality design we have in the rods, he's bringing that over there to the mm-hmm. baits. And it's and it, we have a tungsten line that, you know, shows that same quality. And, you know, the one bait that I believe is going to be in your box is the our blower-style topwater bait, which is the TB-115. And, I mean, the attention to detail on it is, you know, second to none. Like you said, Louie does a great job with the colors. He also did a lot of, you know, testing with the action and getting the bait to do exactly what he wanted it to do before ever releasing it. I mean, I think he worked on this stuff for, you know, easily over a year. All right. Just him talking to me about it, it was over, you know, that long. And just every little detail in it is, you know, pretty special. Just And that's just because, again, all the effort and detail that he wants to put into stuff. Yeah, the bait that you're talking about, and, and for those of you at home watching this, uh, let's see if we can zoom in on it. This is the uh, the TB one fifteen, the top water blower. I mean, the detail on this thing. I mean, right down to I don't know if you can see it, but right at the top of the uh, of the gill plate, there's a little bl- splotch of blue. I mean, it's a smoking looking bait, and it also comes in a uh, I don't know, like black with with blue. Um, every one of you is going to get one of these in the, uh, the August box. Uh, it's the featured item. It's perfect for this time of year. Um, for sure. what, what, what kind of setup would you, would you rig this thing on? Yeah, I, I like to throw most of my top, like, as far as that goes, I throw it on straight braid. Uh, I use Sunline braid, uh, 40 pound SX one. Um, the rod I use is an art invoker pro, uh, it's a seven, four, but it's a medium heavy, but it has a regular action. So basically what that does is it, the tip, the, you know, the, I call it the softness. I don't know what the technical word is. The softness of the tip goes way down into the blank of the rod. So it's, you're able to make a long cast with this bait, which the way that bait's built and designed, it's going to, it's made for long casting anyway, the way the weight transfers. So when you add that with this rod, with, you know, the parabolic bend, you're going to get those long casts. With the straight braid, you're going to have a great hookup percentage if it hits it, you know, at the end of your cast. Um, I use a lose reel. I use a Pro Ti. It's a seven five to one. Uh, it's just a, you know, it's it's the reel that I use a lot of times for mas- mainly everything. Um, but that's my setup. Uh, I want to go back to the bait a little bit. The ma- one cool thing about the, what Louie does with the baits is he, you know, that bait in the box comes with a really quality hook. You know, it comes with a triple grip. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it comes with a, uh, a feathered treble on the back, a triple grip also. I always throw a top water with a feather. Um, you know, that's just a, a really cool thing as an added deal inside the package, uh, straight out. You don't have to, you know, have your own feather hooks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are really sharp-looking baits, and uh, we're going to be working with ARC, uh, I think, two more times before the end of the year. Um Really impressed by the, the quality. They're definitely super sticky hooks. And, uh, yeah, I was really impressed with the paint schemes. It's uh, the, the, the color schemes, I, and I think we have 18 colors uh, mm-hmm. in the TB-115 series. And for, for those, the, the 115 is basically a millimeter measurement, so it's actually a four-and-a-half-inch bait to where 
you know, there's there's a bunch of blower style, you know, that yeah. hair and bite deal uh, type baits on the market. And basically, from what I can tell with the other companies, and I haven't used a whole lot of other ones, um, is you have a really small one and you have a really big one. And basically, this four and a half inch kind of fits in between mm-hmm. as that niche of not too big, but not too small. Kind of if you want to be a little bit subtler, but you still want to have that, you know, that splash and throw and type action that you can work really fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not as big as like a Reaction Innovation Vixen or something right. like that. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice little bait. I can't wait to I can't wait to throw. But you can tell from the from the transfer system, it's 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 got that magnet at the back, so that when you when you go to toss it, that it just sits in the back. Lets oh you yeah, throw dude, it. it'll pull a lot. Like yeah. it'll just it'll throw as far as you want it to go. I mean, for sure. Yeah, it's impressive. That's impressive. I get a, and just a, just a little tidbit. The I get a lot of questions on. We we actually have another bait. It's called a slider, and it's more of your spook t- style, like the Vixen is. You know, yep. it doesn't have really have the cup mouth. And the difference in the blower when you would use the blower over the slider is when you're like I said, the herring fish, or if you're really wanting to work the top water like really fast in a schooling fish situation, the bait's going to move back and forth really fast, but it doesn't come to you near as mm. fast. So it walks back and forth really fast instead of covering a lot of distance back towards you. So that's mm. really the main difference with those two style of baits. On uh, when you're on, on a on a walk the dog type top water, do you like uh, mm. a, a feathered treble in the back or no? Yeah, I, I always use one, and, yeah. and I'll change up the colors. Um, actually. You know, my roommate that I travel with, Justin Atkins, he's a big topwater dude. You know, he he won the Forestwood Cup on a topwater. And he's taught me a lot about the the feathered treble deal. And we he actually uses a couple different colors, and he's gotten me onto it. Sometimes we'll, you know, use a colored one, a white one, a black one, just kind of for different situations, depending sure. on the forest, how clear the water is, stuff like that. Yeah. Right on. Well, let's uh, – Jared, what do you say – what do you say we open the hotline, Wes? You you uh you you up for a few phone calls? Oh yeah, for sure. Always. All right, all right. Before we do this, you can open the hotline, right, but uh, let's 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 give away some stuff. And people, I really need you. I wish I could zoom in on myself, but uh, oh, hold on. Ask and I shall receive. C Max, ask. I need you guys to do me a favor. My office is overrun with stuff. I need to give it away. Max, I need you to take it serious, but I need you guys to write these numbers down and claim your prizes. I can't keep giving away stuff for a second and third time. I literally have way too much stuff, and I want you to have it all. So, without further ado, (laughs) uh, the first number is T884. Zero N two eight five seven, and I agree with RC Basson that this TB one fifteen looks sick. Uh, something else. Everyone that's 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 also put in for the super chat. I'm going to say thank you by grabbing a giant box, and we're going to pick. I'm going to write down everyone's name, and I'm just going to grab somebody and uh, give you guys some stuff too. We'll make Rafi really have to work. Oh, by the way, Rafi's on vacation, so he's not on the chat. So I'm actually not sure who's managing the chat, but it's not me. Uh, Rafi's out at Bass Lake uh, with a family and uh, definitely not catching bass. Um, but he's definitely on Bass Lake. So hopefully he's having a great time, enjoying some time off. And uh, wait a minute. Is that him, Bass Rich Fishing? Or Big Rich Fishing? No, that's not him. Anyway, all right, so uh, I think the hotline's open. Not yet. Jared's working on it. All right. uh, Get your questions ready, folks, because you don't. I can't claim. I know I can't claim the number if you don't call your number. Somebody give me your number. I'm totally down for it. Um, All right, listen. We got a guy that just, you know, he made, he made more money than you in one weekend than you're going to in the entire year. So he obviously knows something about fishing. Ask him the questions. Now is your opportunity. And there's no other podcast on the planet that takes live questions. So let's, let's, 
Let's hook up this hotline with some questions. Uh, are we out? Are we live? Hotline is live. All right, great. Um, um, go ahead. Oh, why are people texting me? Don't text me. Call into the hotline. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, I'm waiting for like Brendan to call in because he's always the first caller. Oh wow! Or T what? You should see all the people putting their codes in the chat oh. for the golden tickets. Hmm. Okay. I might actually call one of those. It depends. I might give away a prize to the first person that calls in. In fact, I'm gonna randomly do that. You know why, Max? I have my money on Brendan. Uh, no. Uh, really? Yeah. All right. Max, you got any questions while we're waiting? Sure. Um, so what, like, moment when you were a child just sprung off and decided that you wanted to fish and do tournaments and stuff? Hmm. I would have to say, I think, from a tournament standpoint, for I mean – I think it was the second tournament me and my dad ever fished. Uh, we actually were able to win. And, like, you know, obviously it plants that seed, and you're, like, want to win all the time, and you think that every time you go, you're right, going to win. you're going to win. <laughs> and then we, I, the, the thing about that is that we, the next time you go and you don't win, it just makes you that more matter, and you keep going back, and you keep going back. And then you win again, and it just keeps kind of, like, stringing you along. And then before you know it, you're addicted to it, and you just, like, go every weekend. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. All right, Max, we got some calls. We're going to take it. Let's go from Macon, Georgia. Hello? Hello? Can, you got you to turn down the volume. There you go. What's going on? What's up, Rick? Hello? How you doing, man? Hey, I'm good, man. I had a question for Wes. Okay. What's up, buddy? Okay. Hey, man, how you doing? Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. On your win, man. Yeah. The question I wanted to ask you was, um, what was your winning bait that you caught your most fish on? Uh, the the day four, I actually caught them swimming a jig um, in some shallow bank grass. And throughout the tournament, I actually caught – Half my fish on a frog. Um, I caught a few fish on a square bill crankbait, and I caught, I think, one or two key fish uh, flipping a dirty jigs, uh, Matt Herring flipping jig. But it, up until day four, it was kind of a hodgepodge of baits, but then day four, I kind of just stuck the swim jig in my hand, and it paid off. I bet you've been asked that question a few times, huh? One or two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to our next caller from Marion, Ohio. No stranger to the show. Hello? Hey, what's up, Rick? What's going on? Who's this? Uh, this is Greg Whitaker. Oh. What's up, Wes? What's up, Max? What's up, buddy? How are you? Good, good. Hey, man. Uh, just want to send uh, prayers and love out to the Monster Bass family. And, uh, Thanks, bro. Wes, man, you closed it on day four. I was watching you live the whole time. I don't know if I crushed it, but we caught just enough to win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said you closed it. Way to close it, man. Oh, close closed it. it. I, I, was say, I didn't crush nothing, but I did close it. Thank goodness. Absolutely, man. Right on. How you doing, Greg? You good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a couple uh, tornadoes here today, so I'm just uh, hanging out in my basement. And yeah, nice. want to yeah. call in and uh, say what's up. You have lighting like Max, or uh, we have no power right now, but um, but when you do, it will come back on here soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right hey, on. Max, nope. good luck. Um, in your new school, brother. Dang. Oh, uh, I like it a lot. He wished you good luck, Max. Yep. Good luck oh, at school. I can't hear him that well. All right. Well, you got to clean your ears, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling hey, in, Wes, Greg. I'll be, I'll be Absolutely. I'll be rooting for you next year, Wes. Good luck, man. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. 
Let's uh, let's take this next call. We got a, quite a few. Hello. Hello. Hi. I had a question for Wes. Come on yeah. with it. Okay, so what? Which is your favorite lake to fish? Uh, out of any lake I've ever been to, I would say my favorite place to fish. Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, probably the funnest lake I've ever been to is probably Santee Cooper, uh, just because it sets up for the way I like to fish, and it's got gigantic ones in it. Um, from a tournament standpoint, I don't really like Santee Cooper because it's always a slug fish, and you have to catch such big weights. Um, but just from a fishing standpoint, I really enjoy going to Santee Cooper. Well, that's awesome. You gave me some real good insight. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And she took one of my questions. Y'all have a good one now. So. You too. You too. All right. Let's. Uh, yeah, she took one of my questions. Ugh. All right. Let's go to let's go to the next one. Hello. 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 Hi. This is James. James. Sorry. Yes, sir. How you doing? Hey, Rick. Sorry for the uh, off in the fa- in the uh, family business. Yeah, That's thank you. Rough. Sorry about that. Yeah. Max, nice room. Wes, what would you rather fish, lake, or would you rather fish freshwater, like rivers and so on? Um, 100% a river system, uh, just because I feel like I'm a lot more comfortable doing that because that's how I grew up fishing. Uh, I understand it a lot better, the current deal uh, that comes with the river system. And uh, I don't know, I, I've just never fished on, you know, true lakes that much because there's not that many in my area. It's more, I've got the Tennessee River and the Coosa River, which is, like I said, what I grew up on and I'm a lot more comfortable with. I agree with you. I'd rather fish fish a river than I would a lake as well. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Who else we got? I think I you know who wait, wait. Whoever the next caller is, I'm gonna give him something. I don't know what it's gonna be. I'm just gonna give them something. We don't know what it is. Yeah. We'll see if they're a good caller or not. Go ahead, caller. Hello, fellas. Fishing with T Rex here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, T Rex! Right, now I got to give you something. How you guys doing today? How are you, bro? Hey, uh, I'm good. I just want to let you know I took my July bag out to the Santa Margarita Lake here in California, and I was using the Bruiser Cruiser and having myself a good time. Latched onto a two and a half pound crappie. Wow! Whoa! Yeah. So that's uh, not bad. Good to see you, Max. And my my question for Wes is, who inspired you the most growing up to fish? Oh me, uh, it was it was a a three prong approach when it comes to that. Um, my dad, my granddad, and my uncle were probably the biggest influencers um, in my fishing from a young like you know kid standpoint. And then as, as I got a little bit older, there's a there was a few guys, you know, that fished locally that I really looked up to that kind of, you know, helped me out whenever I needed it. Uh, you know, Alan Glasgow, I have to give a shout out to a guy named George Crane, just really great guys that didn't really have to give me the time of day and chose to. And I mean, I have to credit a lot of that, like a lot of where I'm at today for them. So I really appreciate it. They, they probably never net will never know how much I appreciate it. That's great. It's always good when it comes to, you know, family. I'm Everybody knows I'm a big family guy, family first. So that's good to hear because my biggest inspiration was my grandmother. That's awesome. So, that is. All right. Well, I that's well, big, yeah, I won't take up too much time because I know you guys got a lot of callers. So I just wanted to call in real quick, say hello to everybody, and uh, I'll be praying for the family. Just have a great day. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um. Before we take the next question, because I know we got someone from Texas, uh, Harley Hirschberg, I saw your comment about the uh, carpet decal. I want to know how it was shipped to you. 
Was it folded in half? Was it put into a box? Because I found out that my warehouse shipped a couple carpets decals, not in the way that I would expect a carpet decal to be shipped. So if yours is damaged, creased, anything I want to know about, it, you guys send me a picture and don't worry, I'll take good care of you. I just want to know what was the condition of it when it showed up and is it in good shape? All right, let's go on to the next call. Oh. Hey, Rick. How Who's you that? doing? Good. Who's this? This is Bobby from Texas. Bobby. Yeah, just a, I guess a quick question for Wes. Like, um, obviously, in case you can't tell, yeah, I grew up in the country, but I'm used to pond fishing most of my life. Um, kind of took a 20 year hiatus as I was in the military and then getting back into family life. But now I've, <laughs> it turns out I'm bored and I've gotten back into fishing. Like, Sign up for the Monster Bass subscriptions, loving those, but kind of transitioning from from pond fishing to to more lake fishing and stuff. Obviously, no boat. I do bank fishing, but what would you be your best advice to you know kind of that transition? Because I'm I'm not catching anything lately. Yeah, the main thing as far as you know catching fish from the bank in a lake or you know any aside from a pond where you know they're not trapped right there in a, in a one acre deal is um you know really try and find the if you're on a kind of a popular lake i feel like you could like research where a lot of the tournaments go out of around the boat ramp and literally go fish on the bank around the boat ramps because that's where the majority of the fish are going to be brought to you know over you know the course of the tournament season so there's always going to be getting fish brought to you and it just gives you a higher percentage of actually catching one on the bank where you're not able to go out on a boat and go wherever you really want to. Good feedback. All right. Cool. Cool. I'm all right, man. Well, uh, obviously y'all have other questions waiting. So that's just kind of my thing being, being back new to it. So I appreciate it. Yep. Um, congratulations. Yep. And, and thanks thank a lot. you for your service, the by the way. Can't wait to get my next bag. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Bobby. Appreciate it. All right, Rick. See you later, man. All right. Uh, before we take the next call, I got a really serious one. We need to really help Matthew, Michael. Uh, he's got a serious question. Uh, he needs our help. I'm going to need everyone at home to chime in in the chat. Uh, his wife says that he spends too much time on fishing stuff. Sorry, he spends too much on fishing stuff. Is it time for a new wife? <laughs> Yes. I was going to say the same thing. I don't I know. I didn't want to be the first one to say. <laughs> yeah. So, folks, this is a really important one. He needs us. The monster bass community needs to intervene and help him. Matthew, God, I, don't, I would not want to be in your shoes. I tend to lean towards the new wife, but I don't know. Uh, let's talk about your problem. How big of a problem is it? Like, are you spending, like, too much, or is she just, like, you know, making a big deal out of nothing? Oh, let's see. No new wife. Get your wife a boyfriend. Heck of a lot cheaper. Um, time to get a higher paying job so you can get even more. I don't know. Stay single. Have lady friends. Playa. Uh, join the party. I don't know, man. Max, I hope Max, what would you do? Max. Max. Yes. What would you do? Yes. I don't know. I would, I would, I would dump her. Yes. You would what? <laughs> just I dump, dump her. her. You dump your wife? Just dump yep. the wife. Max, uh, can you do me a favor? Is your mom home? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. You know what? Never mind, Max. But I'm going to go find out. Nope. I hear nothing. I think All they right. went out to my Boy. I, I got to tell you, Max. That you weren't very, I mean, you were very firm and harsh. Like I've set my boundaries, yeah. dump her. She's yeah. got to go. So, yep. uh, you know, Matthew, I, I hope the monster bass community, you know, I, we're all a bunch of counselors here and, uh, we get paid to provide counseling services to people like you. And we thank you for trusting us with such an important question and hope you make the right decision. Let's go to the hotline. Okay. Hello? Hey, Rick. It's Model Fishing from Florida. How's it going, bro? 
going great, man. I just uh, wanted to congratulate Wes and ask him what his PB was and what did he catch it on? Uh, my, my PB largemouth is a 915. I uh, caught it at the St. John's River in 2014 in a BFL regional, I think it was. And uh, I caught it on a, a Zoom baby brush hog, uh, watermelon red, in a tournament. Weird. Did you win big bass? Nice. I, I did win big bass. I uh, I think I had 26 that first day of the tournament, and day two I had whatever, and I was leading going into the last day. I had an 11-pound lead, I think, and I ended up finishing second by like four or five ounces. Oh. Oh. But – but I mean, and it wasn't a. T- I don't ever tell anybody I caught a ten pounder because it was literally one ounce from being a ten. But it, the scales literally said nine fifteen. So I, I have never caught a true ten pounder. Mm. Mm. Man, that's way better than anything I've ever caught. <laughs> Probably a lot of luck involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you answering my questions, and like I said, congratulations. Our thoughts and prayers go to that monster bass family member who has only passed. And uh, Rick, thank you for everything. Thank you for getting me an angler fest. Had a great time. You thank guys you. have an awesome night. Thank you. You too, Thanks, man. Buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, my, all my questions keep going. Not going to be many left here. Do we have another call? All right. Uh, one bait for the rest of your life, Wes. What are you throwing? One bait. We might as well make it a swim, G. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess, white? Why, why not? No, I'll probably go with a black one, to be honest. Just, I don't know. Everybody throws a white one, so I'll throw a black one. <laughs> Got it. Um, that one's good. All right, let's take, uh, let's take another call. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi, Rick. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Jeremy. Jeremy, what's going on? Hey, pretty good. Uh, not a whole lot. I'd like to help you out with uh, with your rod situation. A couple of months ago, you were doing a live video or doing a broadcast about you needing help with boxes for your rods in your garage. Okay. I have two boxes in my shed for you that you could get to put rods in and you could smell them out to people. That would be amazing. And I really appreciate you thinking of me, but here's my predicament. I'm going to bet you that it costs $20 to ship that empty box to me. Yeah, I'm guessing the same thing. Yeah, and then I'm going to pay $20 to mail it back out. And pretty soon we just spent 40 bucks. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. You tell me if it makes sense. I'm thinking about heading down to Home Depot Getting myself a eight foot piece of PVC tube, have them cut it for me, throw it in there, put some stuff on the end so the tip stays safe, and just doing that. What do you think? That sounds pretty good. Yeah. I mean, listen, I appreciate and I appreciate tell, you though. Uh, tell Wes, oh, no problem. Tell Wes uh, he did a very awesome job. Why don't you tell him yourself? He's on the line. Wes, you did an awesome job, and I'll hope one day I'll go to the Bassmaster Classics, and I hope to see you there. I hope to see you there too, man. That'll be one awesome. Day. Well, thanks for calling in, man. Right, I really no, appreciate it. Have... Oh, no problem. You guys have a nice one. Yeah, you have a nice night. God, that was really nice. That was for nice sure. of him to think about my fishing rods in the garage. I got to get rid of them. What am I going to do with them? That show was a while ago, I remember. Oh. It was like two months ago. Maybe. Well, listen, he's got a better memory than you. Just so. Yeah. So, all right, let's go to Kingston, Massachusetts. Let's see who's on who's on the other line. Hello? Hey, how's it going, guys? It's, uh, my name's Jay. Got a question for Wes. So uh, what would your advice be to someone or people who are aspiring to be a professional bass angler? Um, and if you could key on some financial aspects of it, that'd be great. Um, I don't 
know how to, you know, what, what situation you're in, but I can just give you how I approached it and, you know, the steps that I kind of took in a, you know, a broke down quick, you know, turnaround. Um, from a financial standpoint, uh, if you don't have sponsors, um, I have a few great sponsors that, you know, I, we couldn't do this and make a living doing it without them. But without those trying to get started, um, it was really tough for me. I, it, I would work. Uh, I framed houses. Any way I could make money, I literally saved as much as I could. And then from a tournament fishing standpoint, I always told myself that you have to be competitive locally before you can be competitive regionally. And then once you become competitive regionally, then you can try and start branching out, you know, fishing the Bassmaster Opens and seeing how good you compete against, you know, pros that are, you know, fishing the elites at that time and guys that are have been doing it for a while that are, you know, great fishermen that just haven't made breaks to fish the elite series. So don't try and skip steps of the ladder, um, in my opinion, because you're going to fall back down pretty quick unless you're just – one of the best fishermen to ever pick up a rod and reel, and there's not many of those guys out there. So really just taking your time and, you know, practicing your craft at what you're really good at before you go spend all that money and really lose a lot, and then you're in the hole and you can't ever recover. That's that's kind of the way that I looked at it, and I caught a few good breaks uh, in a few key tournaments that, you know, allowed me to, you know, jump up and be able to fish here and fish there. But it kind of just depends on, you know, how good you do here and how good you do there at the end of the day. Awesome. All right. Thank you. And uh, congratulations. Thank you, man. All right. I think we have time. You know what? Let's just go. We, oh, my God. We got like, Wes, you got time for a few more calls? We got, I got all the time in the world, buddy. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> if they want to keep calling, I'll keep answering. It, it's fine with me. Well, actually, I have more like till 10 o'clock because my mom gave me a bedtime. <laughs> I told her I was going to stay up all night watching OBX season two because it drops tonight at 3 a.m. She's like, no, you're going to bed by 10. So, oh, what man. Happens, Mom? Max is making the show tonight. Like, just... Max. Max, it's good to have you back. <laughs> you're, you're doing everything I expected. Uh <laughs> Uh, I just want to I just want to make sure everyone in the Monster Bass community knows uh, that uh, uh, Matthew uh, Michael uh, has decided that he's going to keep his wife. He's going to go. Call. He's going to go against the grain. Dang it! Um, because there's this thing called alimony, Max, and spousal you know it's spousal support. So he'd have to cut his earnings in half and give it to her. And then True. what would he have to spend on fishing equipment? Do the math, Max. Less. How much less? A lot less. And then How he much? nowhere to take his rods because the wives always take the house. Max, you're far away from the, from the thing. I will say that we sound big and bad talking behind the camera, but if we were in that situation, it would probably be reversed and just going with what he's going with. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Let's take this call out of Florida here. Oh, yeah, we got golden tickets, too. Hello? Oh, we dropped him. All right, call back in, and we'll hook you back up. Let's, let's go. Uh-oh. Hello? Hello. How's it going? Well, uh, good, how are you? Yeah, I'm pretty great. Hey, uh... This is KJ from Arkansas. I just had a question for Wes. Uh, if he had to say his five favorite people to fish with, who would it be? Besides me and Santa Claus? Or including oh. Santa Claus? Uh, not including Santa Claus. All right, great. KJ from Arkansas asked what my, who my five favorite people to fish with is. <laughs> That uh, doesn't include Santa Claus. Yeah. My number one's going to be, I, I'm going to be really smart on this one. My number one's going to be uh, my girlfriend, for sure. Beyonce. Num number two. Or, yeah. It won't be, it won't be long. Um, uh, kind of threw my mind off that way. Number two would be, oh, gosh. Probably fishing with my dad. 
Number three would be fishing with my best friend, Heath Hudgens. Number four would be anytime I got to go fishing with my granddad. And number five would have to be probably one of my very good friends that I haven't known that long. Um, it's a guy named Kyle Jesse. And I mean, he's just one of the most amazing fishermen that I've ever been with. And I learned something every time I'm in the boat with him. Like he's just that good that I've, really I've, nobody, it hasn't really been brought to the surface yet. No, I've heard that. I've heard a lot about that guy myself. So uh, that's, that's interesting to hear. And I appreciate answering my question with. Yeah. And, and I mean, this guy, I, I, I'm not sure where he came from, but like once I met him, you know, I think I met him a couple, you know, six or eight months ago and I've, I've got to fish with him three or four times and he's literally caught more than I have every time. So I don't really know. I, I probably just need to start asking him questions. Wait a minute. Well, who who if, is this uh, guy that we're talking yeah. about? I knew his something name's, was up when he started cracking up. His name's Kyle Jesse. Like, he just moved to Alabama, and, like, he just, I don't know, dude can flip, fishes out deep, knows his mm. graphs, like, spot on. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I've, I've heard a lot about him, too. That's uh, that's good to, good to hear. Hopefully we get to learn more about him. Hopefully. Appreciate it. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, let's, let's go to the next call. I mean. All right, thanks, guys. All right, bye. I have a suspicious feeling that KJ is, um, what is his name again? Kyle Jesse. The only th I, they may be connected, but the only thing is I don't know the guy from Arkansas unless he just changed. I don't know. Wow. Uh, maybe. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to the next caller from Virginia. He's been waiting for six minutes. Go ahead, Ralph. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Hey, what's going on? What's up, brother? What's up, buddy? Hey, this is Army Outdoors. Uh, so, first of all, Rick, sorry about your situation. Thanks, bro. My condolences. Um, and uh, I'm active duty Army. Uh, thank you. Been in uh, actually 18 years today. Damn. Uh, so I wanted to say thank you for your company service and, and everything you guys have done and the tribute to veterans that were on the boxes. That would have been a lot. So thank you. Thank my, you. My pleasure. Thank you. So, <laughs> so I am currently in Michigan uh, on vacation. And starting Saturday, I am doing an Army exercise for two weeks up here. So, uh, But it has been a learning experience. And actually, yesterday, I fished with uh, Jeff Burlingame from Burley Fishing uh, on a lake uh, near his house. And it was a new lake for both of us, uh, for him in Michigan and for me completely in Michigan, having only been here once before so mm -hmm. what would be your guys advice to getting onto a new lake and figuring out because we threw every box or every lure in this month's bag and half the things in my bass boat and i think we got about maybe 10 fish between the two of us and it was just a struggle trying to figure it out so like how would you guys attack a brand new lake new state new area because i'm stationed in fort knox kentucky where the water's dirty it's uh, dammed rivers and flood control, and I come up here and I can see ten feet of water. It's crazy to me. So. Who do you want to answer that first? No, Max. Because if you take my answer, brother, go ahead. What's your answer, oh, wow. Max? What's your answer, Max? Get well, it, Max. I don't know what he was doing, but one thing you could try is you say you're trying different baits, try different colors. Okay. Solid, solid. Okay. Wes? Uh, talking about Michigan, the, only th the one thing that popped up in my head as soon as you said it was you need to figure out what's the main bass in the lake because being in Michigan, you can be majority largemouth or you can be majority smallmouth, and obviously you're going to have to go about catching those in a different way. Sometimes you don't, but a lot of times you do, and – um. You know, with the water being that clear, you know, I, I have to adjust to it because I grew up, you know, kind of like you were talking about fishing dirty, shallow water. You just have to use light line, real natural tight baits and, and just kind of, you know, basically figure out what fish lives in the lake the most and what their main forage is and then try and, you know, go from there. It's good advice. Okay. Good advice. Um, I know you didn't ask for my advice, but would you like it? Go ahead. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, I went off here. Right okay. Right, so. yeah, it, it, was, it was a struggle. The first fish in the boat was a pike that Jeff caught. And then it was just a struggle thereafter. All right. Here's what I would do. I would call Kyle Jesse. That's what I'd do. And I would I would find out what he whatever he tells me to do, I do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing you could try is getting oh, yeah. rid of Burley, because I've heard he's bad luck. What are you talking about? Burley's great. Oh, Ollie. Oh, he's just kick him to the bird. I mean he he wears crocs, but he that's the only negative like thing I'll say about it. That's, like... that's the problem. The crocs bring the bad luck. We fish from like six thirty in the morning to like I think we fed off the water like right around two when all the jet skis and the weight floaters came up. And it was, I mean it was just amazing. Like thankfully the army sent me this far north. <laughs> and it was only by chance. And I brought my bass boat and I've been having a blast. Right on. Well, listen, thanks for calling in, and thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you have a fun rest of your time up in Michigan, and, and, and stay safe. All right. You guys do the same. Thank you for everything, too. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again, buddy. All right. All right. Thanks. It's giveaway time. I got to give away some stuff here. Um, let's give away some stuff. Oh, my God. The tiny terrorists are in the other room. Wes, I got twin eight-year-old girls. They're tiny terrorists. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have a boy, too, and it's simple. He's, like, easy. He's oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Two. I, can all, I can only imagine. Oh, my God. Right? Like, like, as men, we're logical. We're problem solvers. And women, no disrespect to any of you, but you're all heart-centered, right? It's all emotion-driven. When these two go at it, it is literally, when I call them tiny terrorists, I mean that. From the bottom of my heart, I love them to death. But do they do they go after each other, or is it like a team effort against everybody else? No, they're totally different. One is an empath that assigns feeling to everything. And if I were to if if I were to go to a cemetery to see my father, or or to see an uncle that she's never met, she'd she, lose it. She'd lose it and be in tears yeah. and whatever. Right. The other one's like, where's the candy and the unicorns? Okay. Like, let's yeah. go. It's time to go out. Anyways. Hi, girls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the, uh, the next prize. Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, a is an apple. And like that, half the crowd just got so pissed because I didn't start with their letter. A4418, A93. Three nine eight. If you're wondering at home what I'm doing, I'm calling out the golden tickets. Every month we put a golden ticket in every single box. We call out the numbers and we win, you win stuff. I don't know what we're going to give away this time, but I can tell you it's going to be a lot more than the normal month because I got to clean out my office. We're going to do another one right now too. We're going to do another one. Uh, the... the uh, J six seven three zero G two eight six. You're you're a winner too. If you won, send an email to marketing at monsterbash.com. Take a picture of you and the ticket. And uh, when Rafi gets back from vacation, after he goes through the all the emails that I sent him and all the to do lists, he'll maybe get to you uh, sending you a ticket or I mean a prize. Um. Whew. Man. The golden tickets from previous months count. Yeah, listen, keep your golden tickets. I'm just calling them. You save them. Listen in, and if I call your number, you win. It's a lot of golden tickets, but there's a lot of winners. So, uh, I threw okay. mine away, so everyone else has a chance Whatever. to win. All right, this guy's been waiting five minutes. Let's go to Florida, and let's take his call. Hello. Hi. 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 How you doing? Okay. And you? I'm doing pretty good. Just trying to figure out. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Thanks. Um. So my husband and my children are trying to bass fish. My husband subscribed to you. Um. But he needs to know what he baits or what he's supposed to use to do bass fishing. So your husband is trying to teach the girl. Are they girls? 
No, we have boys. Okay, There's seven so, of them. So, so your husband's trying to teach the boys how to fish. He's not a fisherman himself. He's subscribed. He's getting the baits, but he's just unsure which ones to fish and how to fish them. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. It's a couple things. And then I'm going to let Wes give you all his tips. First of all, I would say go to our YouTube channel <laughs> because we make videos on each one of the baits and we show you how to use them. Okay. I would also. Okay. I would also tell you to, there's someone, uh, he's probably one of the most knowledgeable people on fishing. Um, and uh, he makes, I just saw him at ICAST this past week. Uh, his name is Nick, uh, Nick Smith, Nick the Informative Fisherman. Watch his channel. That guy will break stuff down like you've never seen. And uh, uh, he's got really good videos too. Worst case scenario I'm going to I'll give you my email address, rick at monsterbass.com. Email me. If you're still having trouble, I'll put you in touch with someone that will give you some tips on how to use the baits that come in the box because we don't want you to have a good time because it's called fishing for a reason. We want you to catch. Okay. I appreciate it. You, you, let's see what Wes has to say. I, I would, you know, I would second the YouTube deal, especially on y'all's channel because – like like you said, they're gonna you're gonna be showing how to use the baits that he's actually getting in your box, um, and there's a lot of informative stuff on YouTube. If you know if it's an option or you know if your your husband's able to do this, they're on most of the all the popular lakes. You know if you're in Florida or wherever you're at in the country, have guides. Uh, you can look those up and kind of just go on a Facebook page or something. And you'll kind of figure out which guide is probably the most well known. And it doesn't even have to be from a fish catching standpoint, but it just if your husband and a couple of your kids can go with it, you know, every time you can just learn what how the guides do with this technique and this weather condition, just and basically learn everything you can from these guys that do it day in and day out as their job. Okay. You don't what would sound be sold. The good good um, bait, like the the lures and stuff. What's wrong with worms and shiners? Oh, he uses worms all the time. <laughs> okay. I, I think what I, I think Wes I think Wes makes a really good point. Like you can get really frustrated. Mm -hmm. You can get really frustrated. And what you end up doing is to putting the wrong bait on the wrong rod and and, and you have a bad experience because you're just throwing everything at him and you're not maybe doing it the right way. So short of just Googling like beginner fishing tips and things like that, if you're going to spend a little bit of money on a, okay. on, a, on a monster bass subscription, it couldn't kill you to get a half day with a guide that'll literally yeah. set you up for a lot better success and probably for some happier times on the water. Yeah, and, and that's why they do it. I mean, it's for that exact situation to teach people, you know, how to, have a good time on the water. And that's basically what it's all about when it comes to kids and stuff. I mean, you want to go catch something. It doesn't matter what it is. Just go catch something. Okay. And if you're still having I, trouble I and need it. help, if you're still having trouble and you need help, honestly, hit me up at rick at monsterbass.com and I'll try and find someone for you. Yeah, we, yeah, we can make it happen. All right. I appreciate it. No problem. And thank you guys. Y'all have a wonderful yeah. night. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All right. I was trying to sense to you to, you know, tell her about the bearded bad man himself. Oh, Alex Rod, he does know a thing or two about beards. Wow, right, let's go to the next guy. And fish. He knows how to fish? I think. I don't pretty know. sure. Hello? Hello? How's it going? Good. How are you? I mean, I've had better days. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Good. Hey, Wes, just wanted to say congratulations. And my question for you is, what is your number one confidence base? Hmm. Good question. Oh, me. From a confidence bait, a confidence bait from a, a bite getting standpoint, um, it's probably going to be who, uh, 
a zoom trick worm on a shaky head just for getting a bite and for like a tournament situation uh you know I, i'm either going to be throwing a frog or a swim jig just because i like like i said in a tournament situation i'll lock it in my hand and get five or six bites a day but they're probably going to be good ones if you can put them in the boat yeah cool i'm i'm uh i'm, I'm close to you i'm uh zoom old monster man. nice nice that's a that's a bite getter for sure tried and true Yep. Hey, thanks, man. Again, congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for calling in. All right. You bet. We got a few more tickets, and I got to give away some stuff. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I, you mentioned Rudd and what happens. All of a sudden, he shows up in the chat. Way to go. You're going to get me in trouble. At least I did say he does know a lot of things about beards. All right. What's up next? All right. Let's take these last three calls. Hello? 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 Hey. Hey. What's going on, fellas? You tell us. No. Right on, man. I had a question for Wes. Uh, I've been catching a lot of fish uh, at a big pond uh, in my kayak. And, uh, I've, I've gone to a few big lakes and haven't really had as much luck as I have on the pond. So my question was, what's a good strategy to uh, start catching as many fish, you know, or like transitioning to from, from the pond to a big lake? Like what would be some good strategies? Uh, in my opinion, uh, it would be from a mental standpoint, going from the pond to the lake, you're not going to get as many bites on the major lake as you are the pond, just from a pressure standpoint. Um, so maybe if you had a 20 fish day on a pond, which is good, a 10 fish day on the lake would be equally as good just because the fish on this lake is, you know, obviously it's probably a public lake and it may be a private pond too, but when you're in a pond, those fish can't get away from you and they don't have near as many places to hide where you get, like I said, you get on that public lake, you're going to have people fishing it every day. These fish are going to be conditioned to seeing baits. Um, one thing you can do to try and get more bites, uh, just from a catching fish standpoint is, you know, downsize your lures, uh, use lighter line and just things like that. And just, like I said, just get your mind adjusted to where you may not catch as many as you do in the pond, but if you catch, you know, half of that, it's still doing really good considering where you're going. Right on, man. Well, good deal. That, that answers my question. I appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. Buddy. All right, I think, yes, we got, I think we got two more calls. All right, let's go to Brianna in Woodside, New York. You like that, Max? Hello? Hello. Hello. Yeah. What's going on? Hello? Uh, don't get stage fright now. Come on, man, spit it out. Hello? Yeah, what's up, bro? There we go. All right. What's going on? Uh, you tell, uh, again, what's going on? Everything's good. How you doing? <laughs> good. Pretty good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm calling, I'm regarding, um, I'm a new fisherman, and I'm learning how to fish, like some people were calling. Okay. And I'm from New York. And my question is, um, with reservoir fishing, I know they've got small mouth, fast mouth, uh, large mouth where I'm at. I'm just trying to figure what good baits are you good to use there. I mean, that's a, that's kind of a trick question because not knowing the conditions, it's really hard for it's really hard for me to say suggest what you should throw. Um, I know what Max would answer with. And so I'm going to give you Max's answer. We'll see what Wes says. But uh, Max loves throwing the Ned rig. He's been watching too many burly videos. And uh, he's going to tell you to step up and throw a Ned rig. Right, Max? That's what I would say. Hey. I do do a lot of reservoir fishing because there's reservoirs near me, even though you can't really fish at some of them. So I didn't say that. But um, 
I usually use a Ned Rig because they're mostly rocky, and it's really good bait for the rocky reservoirs. There you go. Well, you and I, it doesn't really matter what we think. Let's see what Wes says. He's the boss. I am definitely not the boss. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I would second the Ned Rig um, for the smallmouth. You know, it's a great smallmouth catching bait. And it catches largemouth, too. That's the beauty of that bait is it will catch either or. Um, for a smallmouth, you could also lean towards, a, you know, a drop shot. It's more into a, you know, it's not a great beginner type bait like the Ned Rig is. Um, but once you get a little bit more advanced, it's a it's a really good smallmouth bait. And for the largemouth, you know, just a basic a stick worm, um, you know, there's a bunch of different brands. Uh, the most famous is a Yamamoto Senko. Zoom makes a really good one. It's called a Zoom Zlinky. Um, and you can rig these, you know, Texas rig for largemouth or wacky style, which is basically just a hook through the middle of it. And literally, if there's a bass swimming around and you throw the wacky worm bite, it's probably going to eat it. Wow. So, and again, that's a bait that goes either way, smallmouth or largemouth. So just those two or three, you know, techniques are really good bite getters just as far as search baits as well. Yeah, because I, I, when I went out like last week, I was messing around and like you guys were saying before, I, I'm getting most of my knowledge from YouTube. Uh, I don't know if that's like a great thing or not, but I did, I did catch like a two pounder with a Texas rig because uh, it was like a weedy area. But today I went out and I went to a, a rocky area and I was trying to Carolina because they were saying, like, you know, with a rocky area, to, you know, with using that uh, on, a, on a rocky surface. Yeah, I, I would for sure try that Ned rig in the same area you were trying to throw the Carolina rig because the Ned rig's a lot easier to operate and work. Um, I'm not a huge Carolina rig fan, but I know some people are, but the Ned rig will get you a lot of bites, big and small. Hashtag. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate your knowledge and you guys keep up the good work and I'll keep my ticket here and uh, keep listening to Monster Bass. You guys are one of the best and I enjoyed the July, the the July bag uh, that you guys sent me and I'll continue uh, being a member and uh, listening every Thursday so I can get better and better at what I do. Thank you, bro. I appreciate your support. Thank you, Thanks for calling in. All right. I think we got time for like two more. Oh my God. Hold on. Do we have any right now? Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay. Okay. We're going to have, let's take that hotline off the top. I can tell these guys like to talk. This guy is probably in the moonshine basement. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I recognize the phone number though. So go ahead, um, caller. What's up, guys? What's up, Max? What's up, Wes? Rick? What's up? How you doing? Who, who is this, Brandon? This is this is this is BB underscore Raider. Uh huh. BB underscore Raider. What's going on, bro? Not much, man. Just out here sweating in the backyard, and uh, got the notification a minute ago, and looked at my phone, so I figured I'd pop on here take a break give me an excuse to get out of the heat and stuff yeah but uh packing up to go to florida tomorrow why going south hopefully hopefully gonna get on some some large mouth and some redfish and oh. snook and trout yeah. all of it can't get enough fair enough florida's not looking too good right now but i was just calling to say what's up and uh say hey to everybody Missed y'all last week while y'all were all down in ICAST. Yeah, we missed you too. I'm wondering when uh, Alice is going to have us all over for one of these favorite cookouts I'm reading about. I haven't had dinner, but I'm reading in all these comments about all the smoked mac and cheese and all this good stuff. That's a really good question. We're going to have an entire episode about that uh, another day. You know, when I opened the show. Yeah, but uh, going back to what? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was gonna, I was gonna refer back to what the guys were talking about the, the Ned rigs and stuff, as far as small mouth and large mouth, and pretty much you can catch just about. I think I've caught drum, freshwater drum, carp, large mouth, small mouth, 
rock bass, bluegill, catfish, caught just about everything on the Ned Rig, so you can't really go wrong with it. You know, I and, will uh, say, PBJ I think a Ned Rig is the best sport bait made, which is weird. Yeah, I agree. I didn't use them until about two years ago, and I've always got one tied up, especially when times get tough. Max agrees. I do. I always have a Ned Rig on. 24-7 all Yeah, year Max now. is being quiet. Yep. Is that a fish tank behind you, Max? Yeah. Two of that's really, it has a bass in it. I was thinking if Rick will allow me to, that I could do a live feeding on camera. I'll tell you what. You got to get live bait. Yeah. What, what do you got in there? An Even Oscar? What do you got? Like a, an Oscar in there? It's a bass. I told you this already. All right, so don't feed it for like two weeks. Why? It's going to well, die. Go, go to the pet store and get you a dozen comets and dump them in there and watch how fast they go. See oh. that down there? Oh. Is that, where you, is that where you keep the stuff you steal from your dad? What no, is that? It's, it's a bunch of bait fish. What do you? What, let me guess. You took apple cider and you're fermenting it down below the fish tank. No, it's a bunch of fish. Max, you're horrible. All right. That's like prison punch. Prison <laughs> punch. <laughs> you know. Never heard of that. <laughs> neither, neither have I. I gotta tell you something. Never been to if prison. my day could get any worse. I don't understand what just took place. The Los Angeles Lakers. I'm going to switch here for a second. Just traded Kyle Kuzma, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Montrell Herald. Their number 22 pick tonight. The second round in 2024 and the second round in 2028 for Russell Westbrook. Ugh. You know what? I'm out. Jeez. That sucks. You know, man. All, of that, all of that for one guy. No, well, they're clearing. I know what they're doing. They're clearing cap and making space. But still, at the end of the day, you, you, that's a guy that needs the ball. He, needs the, he can't distribute. He needs the ball. Yeah, don't get me started. Garbage. <laughs> what kind of trade is that? Yeah. All right, Brandon. Well, listen, man. Good to hear from you. Yeah, buddy. Hey, I, I was excited to... Uh... To be one of the winners last month for the smallest fish registered on the Tourney X. Yeah, yeah. Did you send in your... Uh, That's crazy. Yeah. I think it was a 12-incher. Or 13, what? yeah, something I like catch that. A smaller one. Well, so Max, that, Was I supposed to send in something? Or? Yeah, send in your name and to marketing at monsterbass.com. We'll take good care of you. Max, yeah. We're having this little tournament called the Big Bass Championships. One fish, your shot at winning a lot of stuff, and how many fish have you, as my co-host, submitted on the tournament in the last three months? That's right, Max. And That's why I haven't sent you anything in a while. That's okay. No, it's not okay. I expect oh, more out of you, Max. Is, I'm replacing you pretty quickly. Your you mom's going to be job, my... one job, Max. That's right, Max. We're going to get to it, too, pretty soon. So, all right, Brandon, we'll talk with you later, bro. All right, guys, have a good one. All right, later. All right, this guy's been waiting 11 minutes. Let's get him on the line. They've got similar names. Who is this? Hello, everybody, this is Brendan. Hello, Brendan. You have a question for Wes? I just wanted to say... uh, Thank you so much uh, for taking my call. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you love to use uh, fall transition. Um, catch like consistently because I know that's you're cutting out. Hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Yeah, you're cutting out. Start over. What's the question? Oh, sorry. Is this better? Yes, sir. Yeah. Keep your keep your right hand above your okay. head, and we'll be good. Okay. So, Wes, um, I know one of the hardest times to catch fish is in the fall transition. So, do you have any tactics that you like to use to consistently catch fish um, during the fall transition? A net rig. 
Um, Max is right, and Ed Riggs good all year round. But that fall transition to where, you know, it's right on the verge of it still being hot and it's, you know, it's starting to get a little bit cool. Uh, the fish are moving towards the backs of the creeks in most places. And I'm talking about from, you know, the Mason-Dixon line south probably. Um, you know, the main thing that I've noticed is to try and match as close as you can to those tiny shad. Like a lot of times you're dealing with, you know, in, you know, inch to half inch shad that the fish are schooling on a lot. And, you know, just whatever you can do to try and mimic those tiny bait fish because they get so keyed in on that. But that's really just what you got to do. And and it could be a top water. It could be a soft plastic jerk bait, a small, tiny crank bait, a blade bait, just a, a spinner bait with tiny blades, just something to mimic those tiny shad. Because that's basically, you'll still have some fish that'll, that are brim eaters and crawfish eaters, but the majority of the fish in the, the lake or reservoir are going to be focusing on those tiny, you know, the inch and a half to in, half inch shad. Okay, Lift your right hand, bro. Sorry. <laughs> well, they did, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I mean, th those bait fish will start migrating, you know, to the backs of pockets and creeks and stuff. And you'll just once you get into a, a you know a bigger arm or you know wherever you're at, you'll see there's a definite area where there's more bait, bait fish prevalent than other areas, and that's where you need to be focusing on. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks. All right, then. Um, Rick? Yeah. Do you also need um, any of the tournament standings? I think, I, think, those I think I'm running out of time, but if you wanna if you want to tell me who the overall leader is in each region, that would be great. All right. Let me pull those up real quick here. I mean, you, you don't have them pulled up? I'm just kidding. Sorry. Wes is out of water. Okay. We're trying to in end the this. Cali <laughs> okay, go ahead. In the California, Texas, Florida region. Okay, my phone's still loading. Phone's oh. seven years old, so sorry. All right. So, first place, Jay Denise, 25.25 inches. Uh, he is from Florida. He's the new leader. Fish. He's right. a new leader Northern at 25 leader. and a quarter inches in the California, Florida, Texas region. Let's go to the north. Who do we got? Uh, we have Jay Croverly, 22.75 inches. That's a big one. It's quite north. a big fish. That's a big one up north. What about the south? All right, in the south, we have Jay Sowers. Um, his channel is Oki Outdoors or Oki adventures outdoors he's one of uh alex epperson's friends um he he has 23.75 inches dang which nice. i would expect more from down here down in the south like i thought we'd be getting a couple 25 inches you know wow i expect more from him max <laughs> max is disappointed max i i I, uh, I'd like you to. I'd like you to voice your disappointment to Alex Epperson tomorrow, and make sure he's fully aware that you expect more out of his 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 band of merry men. Uh, Brandon, actually, I have a question for you. What region is Delaware yeah. in? The north. And what's the north. biggest fish in that region? One that you didn't catch. Um. Well, how big? Twenty-one, I think. Twenty-two yeah. and three quarters. I might have to go to my private pond, man. Yeah, maybe you should. Name, <laughs> name dropper. Well, name, not name, name dropper. My pro <laughs> I got to go to my private pond. You're the worst, Max. <laughs> I've got a couple of those. Yeah. I really should be fishing more. Biggest. I need to get out there and get some. All right. Fish. We got to go. We're done with these calls. Thanks for calling in and thanks for the update, bro. Thank you so much. All right. Later. All right. We got two two things, and then we can let you go back to uh, your you know your life, Wes. So um, needs another water. I'm good. I'm right. good. You know what? There's only one thing we have to do. It's been the, it's probably the most important thing. Um, you know, Wes. Uh, Max is getting up into his formative years, and uh, you saw Max. Can you show us that downstairs again? 
even has a pole. Okay, so, you know, Max has his own little man cave. And Max is getting into his formative years where he's going to start dating. What dating advice... Now, just so you know, Max has received dating advice from everyone from Skeet Reese to KVD to now Wes Logan. What dating advice do you have for Max? And look at him. He is getting, he's taking notes. He is ready to go. What, what do you got for him, Wes? Oh, uh, I'm trying to think about how to go about this. <laughs> yeah, um, me too. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. Um. Probably, I mean, if you like being outdoors and like, I mean, you know, fishing and doing stuff like that, you obviously need to find somebody that doesn't have to love to do that with you, but understands that you like to do that. And I mean, then you, on, uh, on the other hand, you need to learn that whoever you're dating, you need to like what they do too. And, it, and I mean, it just makes the world go around a lot easier when you, and there's a lot of give and take in a relationship. Uh, and just always remember that, like. They're going to give up stuff to do stuff with you to make you happy. You're going to have to give up stuff for them. And, it, and like I said, the world just spins a lot easier that way. Good advice, Max. All right, All right Max. What? I said good advice? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know I said this was our last call. I just found that we have one more person on the line. They've been holding for 14 minutes, so we got to take this call. Let's Come do on. it. No, Go no ahead. Baby. From Alabama, it's probably like yeah. your one of your friends. Probably. Because you know everybody in Alabama, right? There's not very many of yeah. us. <laughs> okay, go ahead, caller. Is this the mayor or the governor? No. Hello? Hey. Come on. Hey, Rick. Hey. It's been a long time since I've talked to you. Who is this? You mean, remember? It's Blake. Say it again. Blake. What's going on, Jordan. bro? Not much. How about you? Uh, you know, just hanging out. Doing this little thing called it's Monster Bass Logan. Live. What's your question? Um, do you have any tips for summer bait? Like summertime, what to throw and, um how to use the bait and stuff like that. Because down in Alabama, it's been really hard for summertime fishing ponds and the river. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I live in Alabama. I know it's like 175 degrees here every day. Um, and it does get tough in the summertime. Um, you know, fishing ponds and stuff, not in a tournament situation, your best time to go is early in the morning or, you know, late in the evening or right before dark. That's when the fish are going to be the most active unless you fish into the night. Um, but, you know, early in the morning, you can get a top water bite most of the time all the way throughout the summer, especially if you get some cloud cover. Uh, it'll keep them, you know, active a little bit longer into the day. Same deal with the evening, you know, a top water deal, uh, a frog, something like that. Um, if you happen to go fishing during the day, uh, you know, I always like to look for shade uh, anytime you can, whether from a dock, uh, an overhanging tree, a grass mat, anything like that, because, I mean, those fish, from a water temperature standpoint, it's going to be cooler in the shade. And also, they don't have any eyelids, and they have to get out of that sun. So they don't have to have a lot of shade, but they have to get under something or something just to cover up their eyes. And, you know, that's just a good ambush point for them and a place that you can kind of tell that's where you probably need to throw to have your best odds of getting a bite. All right. Mic drop. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for calling You're in welcome. and listen, bro. I'm really, I really apologize. I kept you on hold for 15 minutes. Well, uh, but I thank you for being persistent, and uh, I wanted to make sure we got you in. So thanks a lot, bro. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, thank you, buddy. All right, All right. talk. Bye. Whew. Okay, that was a pretty good show. I don't know. What do you think, Wes? I mean, it was uh, that was a good one to end on for sure. I can't believe the dude sat there for 14 minutes waiting to ask a question, but thank you for doing that. And thank you for everybody else that called in. I mean, I, I've never, I would have never thought that many people wanted to ask me something about fishing again. <laughs> well, I, I think they were more focused on me, but no problem. 
I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they were Max, especially with that room setup you got going. Like the main thing that intrigues me the most about the whole room, I just saw it, was obviously you've got the pole with the lights on it. There's a laundry basket on the couch, and there's a table with a picnic cloth on it, like a picnic tablecloth. And I'm I'm just like, dude's got it going on. That's for his. Uh, my you, you, mom. No, that's for your cult, my right? Mom. You're starting a you're starting like a, a movement. Exactly. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no um, doubt, no doubt. The table it looks fantastic, but it was like my great young Republicans table, and my dad will not. Like y- it. Young it's Republicans. What? Young Republicans. No. Yeah, come on. I thought you were in charge of Trump for 2024 over in Delaware. No. Is it? All right. I don't know. Knitting? You got a book club? Maybe. Yeah, exactly. It's, right. a, it's a book club. All right. Listen, let's get it's serious. A, a nude book club. Oh, dear God. We have to go. Oh, he, he just lost it. He had yeah. us and he's gone. It's you gone. had it. You had it. Once again, Max, we've missed you. Thanks for thanks for being here. It's been great seeing you. Uh, when thanks. do you have school next week? Like when do they no, start? I think I'll be here. I won't be as long as I'm not uh, busy. I uh, should be. How many no, push-ups they got I, you I doing don't know. now? I might be on my private pond. How ma- name dropper? I don't like you. Hey, can we can we can we say goodbye to Max? Can we cut him out of the screen? Max, say goodbye to everybody. We're letting you go. See you guys. See Bye, you Max. Next week or the next week. I don't know. Bye-bye. See you, Max. Dude, I got to tell you, the stuff that comes out of his mouth sometimes, that little kid in his strip club lighting in his basement. Oh, God, that's awesome. I've had his mom and dad on many times, and uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. He's a good little dude, though. He's funny. He's funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be something one day. I don't know what he's going to be, but he'll be something. <laughs> Hopefully it's not on an episode of Dateline. <laughs> yeah, he's such a good little dude. Uh, anyway, listen, Wes, I don't. Want, I want to give you back your evening. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on uh, today. And, uh, you know, we wish you the best of luck and continued success. And I'm sure we'll see you again and. You know, maybe we'll have you on the show another time if you're willing to grace us with your uh, presence and answer some fan questions. So, For sure. I, I appreciate the opportunity. And like you said, I'd be happy to be back on the show anytime. You just give me a heads up and I can jump on basically anytime. If I don't have time, I'll make time for you. Great. We're going to do a we're going to do a 2 hour episode and the only question is talk about day 4 in your swim jigs. That's it. I can do it. I can talk for <laughs> hours. I'm hours, sure man. I'm sure you can. All right, man. We'll let you go. Thanks a lot again. Really appreciate you being on the show, man. Thank you, Rick. See you, buddy. All right. Thanks, bud. What a nice guy. What a nice guy. All right, guys. uh, I'm going to call the last ticket. We went over by a lot, and I want to give you guys all the opportunity. I want you to head over to Burley Fishing. They got a podcast. It's a really good one. And I, I feel I feel bad because we kind of compete head to head. So I've been talking with Rafi about maybe changing the time. I don't know. We got some special stuff in the works, and uh, we're gonna try and make that happen so that we don't take away from your opportunity to be with them. I do appreciate you spending your, you know the hour and a half plus with us. Uh, let's call out uh, the last golden ticket before I do. I want to say thank you to James O'Neill, uh, Gabriel. Uh, the other Kevin Van Dam, Big Rich, Army Outdoors, T Rex, Mac Basson, Paul Dampier. I hope I pronounced all these names right. I want to say thank you for uh, all of your um, super chat uh, uh, donations. Um, once I know exactly where it's going to go, 100% of this is all going to go to this. And, uh, and uh, you know, today was a really rough day. Not, I mean, Forget about me, but uh, the family, this is affected. This is um, something I can't even imagine. And so uh, your generosity is going to go to someone else. So thank you so much. The last golden ticket number. K5103H3373. Um. I want to say thank you to all you guys. Um, 
I really enjoy this, this, the opportunity that you guys all give to me. Cause that's really what you do. You give me the opportunity to have this platform. And if it wasn't for your support and your willingness to be a part of the monster bass community, I, I couldn't, I'd be sitting here talking to myself. We love to do things a little bit differently. We love to have you guys, you know, I think we're one of the only shows where you can call in live and be a part of it. It's something I don't see us ever changing. I think it's really important. Um, and I think, I think my guest next week is none other than Steve Chapman. Um, we're going to talk a lot about subscription boxes. We're going to talk about baits. Uh, there's a lot of boxes on the market, a ton of them. And they all do it a little bit differently, and they all do it a little bit the same. And I think to the lay person who's watching, you'll look at them and, and you say, well, that box had 50 bucks worth of baits, and the other had 45 so the box that's 50 must be better. Or you think that the pros, you know, can't, you know, they're picking the baits or, or this or that. We're going to break down the boxes. We're going to talk a lot about it. We're going to talk about what works in your area of the country. We're going to give you a chance to call in. I think it's going to be a great show. Uh, so make sure you tune in next Thursday, same time, uh, same channel. Hope you guys all have a great night. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Head over to Burley Fishing. Watch them. Tell them we said hi and tell them we're sorry that we ran overboard. I don't like doing that to anyone. So. Thank you so much. Have a good night.